Hello, welcome to my channel, another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg. A few weeks ago, Brian at Bookish challenged fellow booktubers to make a video about um, banned books um, under the hashtag readbannedbooks2022. Now, I have already done that, where I spoke briefly about Lolita. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about banned books. Where I live in Spotsylvania County in Virginia, there is a school board member who wants to burn libraries containing obscene material. So I thought I would highlight some more obscene material for you all. And I have selected Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Um, this is considered to be one of the great poems of American literature. Um, it does contain some sexual references. It does contain references to drug use. And that is why it was banned. It was originally published in 1955 by Lawrence Ferlinghetti, uh, and it is uh, one of the, the, the City Lights bookstore in San Francisco. Um, on October 3rd, 1957, he was arrested and charged with disseminating obscene material. He was later cleared by a, a Judge Clayton W. Horn, where the, he ruled that the poem was not obscene. So, is this poem obscene? Um, why don't I try something really different and, and read this poem to you? It is Poetry Thursday. Now, um, this is a very long poem. I'm sorry, I'm not a very professional reader, but let's give this a shot. Howl for Carl, for Carl Solomon, part one. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night, who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz, who bared their brains to heaven under the L and saw Mohammeded angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated, who passed through universities with radiant cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas, and Blake Light tragedy among the scholars of war, who were expelled from academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull, who cowered in unshaven rooms in underwear, burning their money in waste baskets and listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their public beards returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York, who ate fire in paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Alley, death or purgatoried their torsos night after night, with dreams, with drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol and cock and endless balls, incomparable blind streets shuddering cloud and lightning in the mind, leaping toward poles of Can Canada and Patterson, illuminating all the motionless world of time between. Peyote solitudes of hills, backyard green tree cemetery, dawns, wine drunkenness over the rooftops, storefront burrows of tea-headed joyride neon blinking traffic light, sun and moon and tree vibrations in the roaring winter dusk of Brooklyn, ash can rantings and kind king light of mind, who chained themselves to subways for the endless ride from Battery to Holy Bronx on Besendrine until the noise of wheels and children brought them down, shuddering mouth wrecked and battered bleak, 
of brain and all drained of brilliance in the drear light of zoom, who sank all night in submarine light of Bickford's floated out and sat through the stale beer afternoon and desolate Fongazis listening to the crack of doom on the hydrogen jute box, who talked continuously 70 hours from park to pad, to bar, to Bellevue, to museum, to Brooklyn Bridge. A lost battalion of platonic conversational conversationalists jumping down the stoops off fire escapes, off window sills, off Empire State out of the moon. Yakety yakketing, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars. Whole intellects, disgorge and total recall for seven days and nights with brilliant eyes, meet for synagogue cast on the pavement, who vanished into nowhere zin, no, who vanished into nowhere zen New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall. Suffering Eastern sweats and Tangerian bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in Newark's bleak furnished room, who wandered around at midnight in the rail railroad yard wondering where to go and went, leaving no broken hearts. Who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 racketing through the snow towards Lonesome Farm in Grandfather Night. Who studied Plutonius Poe, St. John of the Cross, telepathy and bop Kabbalah because the cosmos instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking vision, Indian angels, who were visionary Indian angels, who thought they were only mad when Baltimore gleamed in supernatural ecstasy, who jumped in limousines with the Chinamen of Oklahoma on the impulse of winter, midnight streetlight, small town rain, who lounged hungry and lonesome through Houston seeking jazz or sex or soup and followed the brilliant Spaniard to converse about America and eternity, a hopeless task, and so took ship to Africa. Who disappeared into the volcanoes of Mexico, leaving behind nothing but the shadow of dungarees and the lava and ash of poetry scattered in fireplace Chicago, who reappeared on the West Coast investigating the FBI in beards and shorts and big pacifist eyes, sexy in their dark skin, passing out in incomprehensible leaflets, who burned cigarette holes in their arms, protesting the narcotic tobacco haze of capitalism, who distributed super communist pamphlets in Union Square and weeping and undressing while the sirens of Los Alamos wailed them down and wailed down wall, and the Staten Iron Ferry also wailed who broke down crying in white gymnasiums, naked and trembling before the machinery of other skeletons, who bit detectives in the neck and shrieked with delight in police cars for committing no crime but their own wild cooking pedestry and, and, and intoxication, who howled on their knees in the subway and were dragged off the roof, waving genitals and manuscripts, who let themselves be fucked in the ass by saintly motorcyclists and screamed with joy, who blew and were blown by those human seraphim, the sailors, the caresses of the Atlantic and the Caribbean love, who bawled in the morning, in the evenings, in the rose gardens and the grass of public parts and cemeteries scattering their semen freely to whoever come who may, 
who hiccuped endlessly, trying to giggle, but wound up with a sob behind the partition in a Turkish bath when the blonde and naked angel came to pierce them with a sword, who lost their love boys to the three old shrews of fate, the one-eyed shrew of the heterosexual dollar and the one-eyed shrew that winks out of the womb and the one-eyed shrew that does nothing but sit on her ass and snip the intellectual golden thread of the craftsman's loom who copulated its static and instantate with a bottle of beer and sweetheart a package of cigarettes, a candle, and fell off the bed and continued along the floor and down the hall and ended fainting on the wall with a vision of the ultimate cunt and come eluding the last jism of consciousness, who sweated the snatches of a million girls trembling in the sunset and were red-eyed in the morning but prepared to sweeten the snatch of the sunrise, flashing buttocks under barns and naked in the lake, who went out whoring through Colorado and myriad stolen night cars and see secret hero of these poems, Coxman and Adonis of Denver, joy to the memory of his innumerable lays of girls in empty lots and dinner backyards, movie houses, rickety rows on mountaintops in caves are with the gaunt waitress in familiar roadside lonely petticoat upliftings and especially secret gas station solipsisms of John's and hometown alleys too who faded out of vast sorted movies, were shifted in dreams, woke a sudden Manhattan, and picked themselves up out, out of basements, hung over with heartless torque and horrors of Third Avenue iron dreams, and stumbled into unemployment offices, who walked all night with their shoes full of blood on the snowbank docks, waiting for a door in the East River to open to a room full of steam, heat, and opium, who, create, who created great suicidal dramas on the apartment cliff banks of the Hudson under the wartime blue floodlight of the moon, and their heads shall be crowned with laurel in oblivion, who ate the lamb stew of the imagined earth digested the crab at the muddy bottom of the rivers of the Bowery, who wept at the romance of the streets with their pushcarts full of onions and bad music, who sat in boxes breathing in the darkness under the bridge and rose up to build harpsichords in their lofts, who coughed on the sixth floor of Harlem crowned with flame under the tubercular sky surrounded by orange crates of theology, who scribbled all night rocking and rolling over lofty incantations, which in the yellow morning were stanzas of gibberish, who cooked rotten animals, lung, heart, feet, tail, borscht, and tortillas, dreaming of the pure vegetable kingdom who plunged themselves under meat trucks looking for an egg, who threw their watches off the roof to cast their ballots for eternity outside of time, and alarm clocks fell on their heads every day for the next decade, who cut their wrists three times successfully, unsuccessfully gave up, and were forced upon antique short stores where they thought they were growing old and cried, who were buried alive in their innocent flannel suits on Madison Avenue amidst blasts of lead and verse and the tanked up clatter of the iron regiments of fashion and the nitroglycerin shrieks of the fairies of advertising and the mustard gas of sinister intelligent editors 
or are run down by drunken taxi cabs of absolute reality. Who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, this actually happened and walked away unknown and forgotten into the ghostly days of Chinatown soup, alleyways, and fire trucks, not even one free beer. Who sang out their windows in despair, fell out of the subway windows, jumped into the filthy Pasanic, leaped on Negroes, cried all over the street, danced on the broken wine glasses, foot barefoot, smashed phonograph records of nostalgic European 1930s German jazz, finished the whiskey and threw up groaning into the bloody toilet, moans in their ears and the blast of colossal steam whistles who barreled down the highways of the past, journeying to each other's hot rod Golgothia, jail solitude, watch our Birmingham jazz incarnation, who drove cross country 72 hours to find if I had a vision or you had a vision or he had a vision to find out eternity, who journeyed to Denver, who died in Denver, who came back to Denver and waited in vain, who watched over Denver and brooded and loaned in Denver and finally went away to find out time and now Denver is lonesome for her heroes, who fell on her knees in hopeless cathedrals praying for each other's salvation and light and breaths until the soul illuminated its hair for a second who crashed through their minds in jail, waiting for impossible criminals with golden heads and the charm of reality in their hearts, who sang sweet blues to Alcatraz, who retired to Mexico to cultivate a habit, or Rocky Mount to tender Buddha or Tangiers to boys, or to Southern Pacific to the black locomotive, or Harvard to Narcissus, to Woodlawn, to the Jay-Z chain, or Grave, who demanded sanity trials, accusing the radio of hypnotism, and were left with their insanity in their hands and a hung jury, who threw a potato salad at CCYN lecturers on Dadaism and subsequently presented themselves on the granite steps of the madhouse with shaven heads and a harlequin speech of suicide demanding an instantaneous lobotomy, who were given instead concrete void of insulin, metrazinol, electricity, hydrotherapy, psychotherapy, occasionally therapy, ping-ponging, and amnesia, who in humorless protests overturned the only only one symbolic ping pong table resting briefly in Catatonia, returning years later truly bald except for a wig of blood and tears and fingers to the visible madman doom of the wards or the mad town or the mad towns of the east, pilgrim states rocklands and greystones, fetid hills bickering with the echoes of the soul, rocking and rolling in the midnight, solitude bench, dolmen realms of love, dream of life and not nightmare, bodies turned to stone as heavy as the moon, with mother finally, star, 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 and the last fantastic book flung out of the tenement window, and the last door closed at 4 a.m., and the last telephone slammed at the wall in reply, and the last furnished room emptied down to the last piece of mental furniture, a yellow paper rose twisted on a wire hanger in the closet, and even that imagery nothing but a hopeful little bit of hallucination. Ah, Carl, while you are not safe, I am not safe. And now you're really in the total animal soup of time. And who therefore ran through the icy streets 
obsessed with a sudden flash of the alchemy of the use of the eclipse, the catalog and the meter and the vibrating plane, who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through the images juxtaposed and trapped the archangel of the soul between two visual images and joined the elemental verbs and sat the noun and the dash of consciousness together, jumping with sensation of Peter Anapana's de anorexic deus to recreate the syntax and measure of poor human prose and stand before you speechless and intelligent and shaking with shame, rejected yet confusing out of the soul to conform to the rhythm of thought in his naked and headless, endless head. The madman bum and angel beat in time, unknown yet putting down here what may be left to say in time come after death. And rose reincarnate in the ghostly clothes of jazz, in the gold horn shadow of the band and blue suffering of America's naked mind. For the love into the Ele ele lemon lemon sabadach saxophone cry that shivered in the cities down to the last radio, and with the absolute heart of the poem of life butchered out of their own bodies, good to eat a thousand years. Part two, what sphinx of cement. Aluminum bashed open their skulls and ate up their brains and imagination. Moloch, solitude, filth, ugliness, ash can and unobtainable dollars, children screaming under stairways, boys sobbing in armies, old men weeping in the parks. Moloch, Moloch, nightmare of Moloch, Moloch the loveless, mental Moloch, Moloch the heavy judger of men, Moloch the incomprehensible prison, Moloch the crossborn, the crossborn soulless jailhouse of Congress of Sorrows, Moloch whose buildings are judgment, Moloch the vast stone of war, Moloch the stunned governments, Moloch, whose mind is pure machinery. Moloch, whose blood is running money. Moloch, whose fingers are 10 armies. Moloch, whose breast is a cannibal dynamo. Moloch, whose ear is a smoking bomb. Moloch, whose eyes are a thousand blind windows. Moloch, whose skyscrapers stand in the long streets like endless Jehovah's. Moloch, whose factories dream and croak in the fog. Moloch, whose smokestacks and antennae crown the cities. Moloch, whose love is endless oil and stone. Moloch, whose soul is electricity and banks. Moloch, whose poverty is the sphincter of genius. Moloch, whose fate is a cloud of sexless hydrogen. Moloch, whose name is the mind. Moloch, in whom I sit lonely. Moloch, in whom I dream angels. Crazy is Moloch, cocksucker in Moloch. Lock love and manless in Moloch. Moloch, who entered my soul early. Moloch, in whom I am consciousness without a body. Moloch, who frightened me out of my natural ecstasy. Moloch, whom I abandon. Wake up, Moloch, light streaming out of the sky. Moloch, Moloch, robot apartments, invisible suburbs, skeleton treasuries, blind capitals, demon industries, spectral nations, invincible madhouses, granite, cocks, monstrous bombs. They broke their backs, lifting Moloch to heaven. Pavements, streets, radios, tons, lifting the city to heaven, which exists and is everywhere about us. 
visions, omens, hallucinations, miracles, ecstasies gone down to the American River, dreams, adorations, illuminations, religions, the whole boatload of sensitive bullshit, breakthroughs over the river, flips and crucifixions gone down the flood, highs, epiphanies, despairs, 10 years animal screams and suicides, minds, new loves, mad generation down the rocks of time, real holy laughter in the river. They saw it all, the wild eyes, the holy yells. They bid farewell. They jumped off the roof to solitude, waving, carrying flowers down to the river, into the street. Part three. Carl Solomon, I am with you in Rockland, where you're madder than I am. I am with you in Rockland, where you must feel very strange. I am with you in Rockland, where you imitate the shade of my mother. I am with you in Rockland, where you murdered your 12 secretaries. I am with you in Rockland, when you laugh at this invisible humor. I am with you in Rockland, when we, <coughs> where we are great writers on the same dreadful typewriter. I am with you in Rockland, where your connection, where your condition has become serious and is reported on the radio. I am with you in Rockland, when the faculties of the skull no longer admit the worms of the senses. I am with you in Rockland, where you drank the tea of the breasts of the spinsters of Utica. I am with you in Rockland, where you pun on the bodies of your nurses, the harpies of the Bronx. I am with you in Rockland, where you scream in a straitjacket that you are losing the game, the actual ping pong of, of the abyss. I am with you in Rockland, where you bang on the catatonic piano, the soul is innocent and immortal, and you should never die ungodly in the armed madhouse. I am with you in Rockland, where 50 more shocks will never return your soul to its body again, from its pilgrimage to the cross in the void. I am with you in Rockland, where you accuse your doctors of insanity and plot the Hebrew socialist revolution against the fascist national Golgothia. I am with you in Rockland, where you will split the heavens of Long Island and resurrect your living human Jesus from the superhuman tomb. I am with you in Rockland, where there are 25,000 mad comrades all together singing the final stanzas of the International. I am with you in Rockland, where we hug and kiss the United States under our bedsheets in the United States that coughs all night and, will not, and won't let us sleep. I am with you in Rockland, where we wake up electrified out of the coma by our own souls' airplanes, roaring over the roofs they've been come to drop angelic bombs on the hospital illuminates itself imaginary walls collapse oh skinny legions run outside oh star spangled shock of mercy the eternal war is here oh victory forget your underwear we're free i'm with you in rockland in my dreams you walk dripping from the sea journey on the highway across America, in tears to the door of my cottage in the western night. San Francisco, 1955 to 1956. Footnote to Howell. Holy, 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 holy. The word is holy, the soul is holy, the skin is holy, the nose is holy, the tongue and cock and hand and asshole are holy. Everything is holy, everyone's holy, 
Everywhere is holy. Every day is in eternity. Every man's an angel. The bum's as holy as the seraphim. The madman is as holy as you, my soul, are holy. The typewriter is holy. The poem is holy. The vo voice is holy. The hearers are holy. The ecstasy is holy. Holy Peter, holy Alan, holy Solomon, holy Lucian, holy Kerouac, holy Hanka, holy Burroughs, holy Cassidy, holy the unknown buggered and suffering beggars, and holy the, hi the hideous human angels. Holy my mother in the insane asylum. Holy the cocks of the grandfathers in Kansas. Holy the groaning saxophone. Holy the Bach apocalypse. Holy the jazz bands, marijuana hipsters, peace, peyote, pipes, and dreams. Holy the solitudes of the skyscrapers and the pavements. Holy the cafeterias filled with the millions. Holy the mysterious rivers of tears under the streets. Holy the lone juggernaut. Holy the vast lamb of the middle class. Holy the crazy shepherds of the rebellion who dig Los Angeles is Los Angeles. Holy New York, holy San Francisco, holy Peoria and Seattle, holy Paris, holy Tangiers, holy Moscow, holy Istanbul, holy time in eternity, holy eternity in the time, holy the clocks in space, holy the fourth dimension, Holy the fifth international, holy the angel in Moloch, holy the sea, holy the desert, holy the railroad, holy the locomotive, holy the visions, holy the hallucinations, holy the miracles, holy the eyeball, holy the abyss, holy forgiveness, mercy, charity, faith, holy ours, bodies, suffering, magnanimity, holy the supernatural, extra brilliant, intelligent kindness of the soul. Berkeley, 1955. Now, I can't believe I read the whole damn thing. Um, so is this poem obscene? Should it be banned? No, it should not be banned. It has its peculiar beauty. It's just peculiar verb. My reading probably isn't the best. You should probably go out and um, get a copy of this book. Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Don't let the bastards ban it ever again or ban any other book. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.